Hi, you guys, I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing. Today, I wanna to recap for you what happened in the stock market in 2018 and give you a few thin predictions for 2019. As a reminder, make sure you click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notifications when I release new videos. So with 2018 coming to a close and 2019 coming right around the corner, it's time to take a look at what happened over this past year and what investors can look forward to in the coming year. Well, none of the things I'm gonna say in this video are in any way, shape or form guaranteed. Let me just remind you, um, I'm being as accurate as I can be given the information that I have. And I just wanna remind you, this is for education and entertainment only. This is not in any way, shape or form a recommendation or some kind of uh, advice to you uh, for what you should do in the next year. Um, but we all know that. So with that said, let's get a dive into the recap of 2018 and the outlook for 2019. So January 2nd, 2018, the first trading day of the new year, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is the major market index that I watch, um, it has like 30 big stocks in it that pretty much are what I call, quote, the market. That was priced at 24,824. Now at the time that I'm doing this, the Dow Jones is priced right at about 25,000. So it's basically gone nowhere in 2018. Now there've been plenty of ups and downs throughout the year, particularly the beginning of the year, very exciting. But these ups and downs have been canceling out all the gains and losses to create very little change in the market. Now, in spite of the fact that the markets moved sideways all the way through the whole year, valuations in the market, I think, in my opinion, okay, are very, very high. Right now, the Schiller PE ratio, that's the ratio that reflects the average price of the stocks in the market divided by their earnings of all of the companies in the S&P 500, which is 500 big companies, that right now is at 30.52. It's come down from 34. Now this is almost two times larger than the average Schiller PE ratio since going all the way back into the 1870s. That average is 15.7. So we're looking at just about double here what it's been. It's also nearing the all-time high of the Schiller PE ratio, which took place when it hit 44 in December of 2009, sorry, in December of 1999. Now, let me just add a couple more things about the, the Schiller PE. The Schiller PE has only been over 30, I think three times in its history, okay, since 1870. The Schiller PE went over 30 in 1999, uh, sorry, uh, in uh, 1929, right before the big depression. It went over 30 in 1998 and stayed over 30 for a period of about a year and a half and then the market crashed in 2000. And then it went over 30 uh, just in the last year or so and has been well over 30 for quite some time. Um, and I think that if you'll take a look at the Schiller PE, all you have to do is just Google Schiller PE and this chart will come up and you can see that every single time in the last 100 and whatever that is, 50 years, uh, that the market has reached this level of pricing, it has crashed in one, in one time or another. So I would be very strongly concerned about this if you're trying to figure out what to do in 2019. So for those of you who are trying to find a good investment opportunities, we're trying to do that in 2018. Opportunities to purchase companies at an on-sale price uh, they just haven't been really hard to find. It's been really tough. A lot of companies with high valuations, and that hasn't been good news for investors like me. However, it looks today as if we might be on the verge of coming to an end of a very long bull market that started after the market crash in 2009. Now, just remind you that I basically got out there and told everybody on CNBC, we're climbing back into this market in 2009, and I could do that because we got out soon enough in 2007. So what does this mean for what we could expect in 2019? Well, it means that all the signs indicate we're in for a significant correction in the market in 2019. Call that a correction. I'm thinking we're in for a significant crash. Um, the other thing that I look at is called the Wilshire GDP. And this is something that Warren Buffett has been um, 
commented on in the past, where the Wilshire, that is the big index of the stocks in the market, you know, the, uh, virtually all of the stocks that trade on the public markets, take all of the value of the whole Wilshire, take everything in there, that's the value of the stock market, and divide it by all the revenue of America, which is called the gross uh, domestic product, GDP. So we divide, let's say we have $18 trillion of domestic revenue. That's all these companies creating revenue, right? And we divide that into the price of the stock market. Well, when it's a one-to-one -one ratio, the stock market's fully priced. So if the stock market, if we've got 18 trillion in GDP, an 18 trillion stock market, Wilshire, uh, would, would indicate a fully priced market. Much of the time, the Wilshire is below that. For all through the 70s, it was about 20, 30 percent. Uh, uh, the Wilshire was of the stock market prices, um, of GDP rather. And and then in the 19, uh, late 1990s, it started climbing up and then all through the 2000s, it's been very high. So 1999, it climbed up and went over 120%. That's when Warren Buffett said, hey, watch out below. And indeed the market crashed. In 2009, uh, it got, or 2008, it got up to about a little over 100% and the stock market crashed. Right now, I don't know that it's ever been higher than this ever. I've never seen anything indicating it has. We're at 172%. That is the Wilshire, which is considered fairly priced at 80% of GDP, is now double that. So I gotta think that this is going south. Um, and bull markets never go forever without a correction, right? 10 years is the record without going into a recession. We're at the record. Every day we don't go into a recession is setting a new record. This current bull market's been going along since 2009. It's certainly possible it could continue well into 2019, maybe into 2020. But the market sideways movement in 2018 combined with high valuations across the board make me think that that's kind of unlikely. And right now, the market genera generating a lot of volatility, a lot of up and down. It's dropping five, six, seven hundred points and recovering 500 points. It feels very frothy and very much like we're coming to the end of something. And we'll see what happens here. Far more likely, I think, is the possibility that we're going to see corrections across the market bigger than we've seen so far. So far, we've seen about a 10% correction. I think we're gonna see 20% or higher as this bull market reaches the peak and begins to tumble down. Now, I will say, I was early in my call in 2007. I was early, and the market went up another 10% after I decided to exit. So it could happen here easily as well. Some companies might see corrections even higher than 20%, right? Um, if you're in an industry that is already really overpriced, those things could drop an enormous amount. And we're seeing that in Chinese stocks like Alibaba and Tencent and so on, that their, their drop is bigger than the, than the market itself. Um, and also we'll see certain industries that will always perform in a cyclical kind of way. So for example, right now, chicken producers are hammered. They're having their own personal private depression. Auto companies are starting to go into recession already. So while this is certainly some of the concerning news for investors, it's really exciting, I think, if you know how to prepare for this. I gotta tell you, it's really cool that Warren Buffett a year ago said that every 10 years or so, we have an economic rainstorm. And when we have that economic storm, it rains gold. And what you want to do when it's raining gold is get outside with a wash tub. Don't go out there with a thimble. And of course, having a wash tub means you've got to prepare for that rainstorm that's coming in before it gets here, right? So if you start selling off stocks after the market's already crashed, it's too late, right? You'll be thinking, oh my gosh, as soon as I sell this stock, it's going to start going back up again. And you're probably right. You got to do it early. And that's, of course, the real trick here. And that's, of course, what people say you certainly can't do. You can't call the market. You can't time the market. Well, Warren Buffett is the least market timing guy I've ever heard of. And he's sitting right now on $110 billion in cash. And he's not timing the market. And I'm not timing the market. And you shouldn't be timing the market. What we're simply doing is realizing that as this market gets higher and higher priced, it becomes almost impossible to find stuff on sale and we naturally end up with a lot of cash. Now, I'm gonna add to that cash by taking the companies that have already gone up quite a lot since way back then when I got them when they were cheap and selling those off now when they've already arrived at or even above what I think is their true value. So those parts of the portfolio, I'm gonna start clearing off 
unless I think there's a really good opportunity for this company to continue going up in the future dramatically, I'm gonna remove those stocks from the portfolio that are already at or above their intrinsic value or their market value. So how should investors prepare for these corrections that I think are coming in 2019? I think the right answer is to get your shopping list of really wonderful businesses, get that list set up. We call that the wish list and get your cash ready. There are going to be some buying opportunities coming up, I do believe. And those corrections that we're going to see in 2019, I think, are not going to come around very often. They are really unusual when you think about it. They happen every five to seven years. This one's a really long term away. But these are excellent opportunities for investors who have the cash to invest and the time to wait for the market to climb back up again. And this is a process that typically begins usually less than a year after a large correction and sometimes as soon as a couple of months. I'm thinking this one, you've got plenty of time. I think you should be keeping the belt really tight. I think you should be saving, 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 putting away as much money as you possibly can, liquidating things that you don't need, right? You got a race car, go sell it. You got horses you don't need, sell them off, get some cash available. And believe me, the best investors in the world do this as well, even though they're billionaires. There's a great story about Warren Buffett on an elevator that um, is going up to his floor. And these guys from this insurance company are looking at Buffett and he's looking down at the floor. And down at the floor, there's a penny. And they're looking at Buffett and these guys are thinking to themselves, is this guy gonna pick up the penny? Because he's looking at the penny, right? And he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't. They get to Buffett's floor, the elevator opens and he steps out. And he looks back at these guys and he smiles at them and bends down and picks up the penny, holds it up and goes, the start of the next billion and the doors close. <laughs> I think that's, maybe they made it up. Okay, I don't know. I wasn't there. But it's a great, great story about a guy who definitely thinks about the value of current dollars. Even though he's in his late 80s, he's thinking about the value of current dollars, what he can do with those in his portfolio over the years, right? I mean, Charlie Munger, Charlie is 94 years old. Charlie doesn't even buy green bananas, all right? And this is a guy who is sitting in a pile of cash, waiting for the market to shift to be able to buy new stocks. He hasn't bought a new stock, in my knowledge, for three years, waiting for this market to turn. So this is a, a, a discipline as part of the ruler strategy that we've learned from these guys for the last 85 years in this family of rule one investors who are making generational wealth happen. So if you approach 2019 with this kind of mindset and strategy, I think it's gonna be a really good time. I think for the first time in years, we're gonna have the opportunity to snap up a bunch of really great companies at really low prices. And man, it's been a long time for me. Um, I've been you know, working hard to try to find the few companies we can invest in, but oh man, when the whole market goes on sale, it's so much fun if you've got the wash tub if you've got the wash tub. And if you do, this is gonna set you up for making a really major difference in your life in the years to come. Now, let me also deal with something that's kind of difficult. Those of you who are already invested, who are in 401ks with mutual funds, ETFs, indexes, those of you who've bought individual stocks and those have been rising and now they've kind of gone flat, what should you do? If you know you've gotta have a big wash tub in order to take advantage of stocks when they're on sale, what should you do if everything is already fully invested in the stock market? Where's that wash tub gonna come from? And I gotta tell you, you're gonna have to kind of make a decision here. In my opinion, this would be the time to exit index funds, mutual funds. This would be the time to start pulling back because if you wait until the market clearly is crashing, it's gonna to be too late. You're gonna be down 20% already. You know that if you pull your money out then, you're gonna to have to take a loss because it's gonna go straight back up. This is what's so difficult about, and this is why so many advisors basically stick to this really old saw. You know, just buy and hold. Nobody can time the market. You shouldn't try. And I, I kind of agree with that. I, I'm thinking really seriously. If you're not gonna learn how to invest, obviously, you just have to stay with it. There's no point in you taking your money out of the market if you don't know the companies to put it into in the future. If you do know what I know and what Warren Buffett knows, 
then now is a really good time to start stacking up cash. And I'm, I'm not gonna say anything more than that. I feel like I'm way out on thin ice as it is with many financial advisors, certainly with the SEC, and I certainly don't want you to get burned. I don't have a crystal ball. This market absolutely could take off and run up another 25%. Lord knows it's already doing magical things with Trump and the White House. Who knows what's gonna happen next? But for me, I can only tell you what I would do uh, and what I am doing, in my opinion, this is a time to start protecting yourself. This is a time to pull it back. This is the time to get cash. And this is the time to prepare for the next round of major market drops and purchases. So I would say, make up your own mind. If you're gonna be a rule one investor, think seriously about cash right now. And then just one final note. If you sort of like the idea of buying stocks, but you don't like the idea of exiting the market, I can completely understand that. You wanna kinda of have the best of both worlds, then what I would do is stack up a lot of cash. Stop putting money into the market at this point at a very minimum and start stacking up cash for a wash tub. Do it as fast as you can. Keep the rest of the investments there and be ready to ride through the market. Uh, but get yourself the biggest wash tub that you can. And I think you'll be glad you did. Now, I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think the market has in store for us in 2019? And what are you gonna do about it? Leave a comment below with your answer and I'll be sure to follow up with you. And thanks for watching, you guys. Now go play. So you guys, if you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about the stock market and about what the options are for 2019, hit the like button and please share this video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the button on the screen for a free gift. Thanks again for watching.